DNA, three letters showing up everywhere these days. In the news. Never give up on a case, no matter what the passage of time may be. On store shelves. We've sold 10 million kits. And in homes across the country. I had kind of really thought that if I hadn't heard from him by the time he was 50, maybe he wasn't interested. Of course, I thought wrong. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, defined in part as a carrier of genetic information. Humans like to think that we invented the first digital computer. The truth is that we're actually the descendants of the first digital computer. Massachusetts Institute of Technology professor Manolis Kellis explains. At the core of every one of our cells lies a digital computer. The DNA is a digital code that receives information and signals and then reacts according to a predefined set of operations. What's new is our increased access to that DNA and the data it carries. The dramatic shift that happened in the last decade is that we went from the human genome costing about a billion dollars to the human ge uh, genome costing about a thousand dollars. We are now able to genotype individuals for as little as a hundred dollars. Companies are taking advantage of this dramatic drop in cost. Research group Global Market Insights claims the world genetic testing market will surpass $22 billion in the next five years. Most of the diseases we know about are not curable. Callis says when it comes to genetic testing, knowledge isn't always power. Being stressed about the fact that I will get Alzheimer's in 30 years could affect my quality of life now and even my health. That's sort of the downside of knowing. The upside of knowing is tremendous. Being able to sort of change my behavior in very subtle ways, knowing that I have a predisposition. This is why Kellis says consult a doctor or counselor or both when considering genetic testing. These counselors can really truly help you, number one, embrace this very complex decision system. And number two, help you cope. A DNA test changed Debbie Ruffin's world. Born and raised in Needham, Massachusetts, she remembers an idyllic childhood. We lived in neighborhoods where you could go out and explore, so childhood wasn't being attached to a, you know, an electronic device. It was kick the can until seven o'clock at night. The oldest of eight children, she graduated high school in 1964, college four years after that. That summer I went to the Cape with my boyfriend. Turned out not the type of summer I expected it to be. He became less and less um, um, part, of the, part of the plan. I came home and realized that I was pregnant. Debbie hid that fact from her parents for half her pregnancy, but eventually her secret was out. Just scared, you don't know what to do, and you spend a lot of time thinking about how you can make it work. Soon, that time was up. She gave birth to a son, Todd. You made the hard decision to give Todd up for adoption. Why? Technically, I had no place to stay. At that point, I'd moved up from the Cape, so I didn't have a job. And I just couldn't see how I could give him a quality of life when I didn't even know where I was going to be. I grew up with a great family. My parents, you know, were very giving care and people. Todd Hines was raised by Beverly and Larry Kamerlengo in a home filled with love and lots of company. My mother has been a foster parent since the 60s. Over the years, even after I was growing up, she had hosted over 350 children from newborns to teenagers through her house. After Todd graduated from Hargrave Military Academy in Virginia, he followed one of his sisters to Texas, where he eventually fell in love and started a family. And as his two daughters grew older, his curiosity about his biological background grew too. We started my DNA search because, you know, my wife, well, we had questions. We wanted to know my background. We didn't have any kind of family medical history. So Todd sent his DNA away to Ancestry.com. Everything happened very quickly. In less than two weeks, a third cousin connected Todd to a second cousin who found his aunt. And then... This phone call comes in from Massachusetts. I was like, it has to be, yeah, you know, that's what it has to be, you know. Hitting the, the uh, pickup button on the phone was, was a little, little nerve wracking for a few minutes. It was a moment Debbie had long imagined. I think I was all over the place. It was a little bit of fear, a little bit of anxiety, but mostly joy. A few phone calls and weeks after that, they met. 
at a party on the Cape with both of their families. And what was that moment like when you first saw it? Oh my gosh, it was like breathtaking. It was so wonderful. And soon they'll get to see each other in person a second time in Texas for Todd's 50th birthday. I think that we're, we're one of the lucky ones. Our DNA and today's technology has was able to bring us together. We didn't get more than that bargain for it. We get exactly what we deserve. Todd also hopes to meet his biological father, but hasn't been able to find him just yet. In the meantime, Todd and Debbie continue to grow their relationship. They call and message each other regularly. In fact, they recently saw each other for Todd's birthday in May. Coming up, if you're ready to test your DNA, be ready for the results.